Okay, as part of a little shop update, I just brought my truck into the shop. Um, last week, the end of last week, uh, we were supposed to get snow. My truck is only two-wheel drive, so I had put the weight bracket back into the truck, um, you know, for in preparation for the snow. Well, today I've got to... Um, it warmed up a little bit, so uh, between the plowing of the parking lots and the roads and everything, um, the roads are fairly dry. So, what I did this morning, well, let me let me go into something else first. Um, what I've got to do is take the weight bracket back out of the truck because there's two things that have got to happen today. I've got to, I have to help my granddaughter move, and. Uh, I have a forklift truck that I have to haul. No, it's a matter of just hooking the trailer up, going to the forklift uh, uh, sales place, picking it up, and taking it literally two blocks to um, the customer. Uh, so the forklift place is probably four blocks away from me. The customer that is being delivered to is literally two blocks away from me so um, but I, I've got to take the weight bracket out anyways not only to hook the trailer up but to um, help my granddaughter move I think I'm not sure whether she's running a van or we're gonna try and put the stuff in the back of the pickup truck but anyways um, it has to come out so last week um, before I put the weight bracket in um, I made another trip to Pittsburgh and I had to pick up um, actually I had a uh, chunk of aluminum uh, a, a, it was eight feet by eight feet by two inches thick that I had to take down to Pittsburgh um, I took that down, picked up some um, decking material, and uh, then stopped and picked up those windows. But to pick up the windows, I had to make some brackets. You know, I had gone down there before, and I think I mentioned that in another shop update, I had gone down there before to pick up the windows, and they really didn't want to load them because they would have had to lay flat on the trailer, and they thought that they would break. So. I had to make some brackets that would allow the windows to stand up on the side. So I made those brackets after I got that uh, billet of aluminum down to Pittsburgh. What I did is uh, put that decking onto one side of the trailer. It was only three feet wide. So I put the decking on one side of the trailer. The decking was three feet wide, 20 feet long. So I put the decking on the one side of the trailer. On the other side, I attached those um, stands that I had made to lean the windows up against. So the windows would be sitting on their side, not laying flat on the trailer. Um, and I will uh, show that to you. I'm gonna show you a little video of the trailer loaded at a rest area. Uh, just north of Pittsburgh and we'll cut to that right now. Okay It's snowing so I'm gonna try and cover the thing up Here are those windows in that J channel that I'm bringing back from Pittsburgh I've got to drop the windows up in Fredonia, New York and the J channel in Buffalo, New York now He never told me that the windows were like this um I've got screens in the back. And I've got the windows on the other side. I thought the windows were all narrow. I thought they were all boxed. He didn't tell me to bring a tarp. Um, so, whatever. And then I've got to deliver them in Fredonia and a bunch of Amish guys are gonna unload them for me. Route 79, just north of Pittsburgh. And we're back. And so, um, I didn't show the billet of aluminum that I had to take down there. 
But uh, I picked them windows up. I dropped them off at a uh, place up in Fredonia and then had to take the decking that was on the trailer uh, to a uh, shop in Buffalo. Um, one of the things that I did when I f uh, picked up the windows was they gave me some small boxes of hardware or whatever they, is in those boxes. Uh, I'm assuming it's hardware. Um, I threw it in the back seat of my truck and I forgot to give it to the guys when they unloaded the windows. So I've got to get that back to those guys. Um, I can probably just drop it off to the owner or have the owner stop by and pick it up. Or um, actually the owner drives by the exit on the throughway for drives by, by my exit on the throughway to get back and forth to work so uh, maybe I could just meet him at the exit someday and give him this uh, stuff but uh, let me cut off here I'll take you out I um, move the trailer back around to the back of the shop so that I could get them brackets off of it um, and I'll show that to you okay here's the trailer behind the shop and those are those brackets that I was talking about that I've got to remove off of the trailer. I've got to get the snow off of the trailer, remove them brackets in preparation for picking up that forklift this afternoon. Um, you, you saw the, how those brackets were used in the video of the, at the rest stop uh, in north of Pittsburgh on 79. One of the things that I have to do before I get the bracket out of the truck to weight bracket is get the snow off. stuff in here for my granddaughter's move I've got to uh, have all that snow out of there This bracket weighs about 150 pounds. Okay, I've got the boards for the window bracing off of the trailer. I've got my third ramp and the plates with the expanded metal on them to use in case the lift can't get up that uh, 
those grating, let's call it, on the back of the trailer. I've also got the truck attached to it. I probably got another half an hour before I have to leave, but the truck being attached to it will give uh, a top-off charge to that battery for the winch in case I have to use that too. But anyways, I'll bring you back. Okay, as part of the shop update, there's two things that I've got to tell you about before I get into something else here. The first thing is I discussed about pulling that forklift. Well, the guy told me, he says, it's a fairly small walk-behind forklift. Why don't you come over here and take a look at it? This was a couple of days before I actually went over there. I went over there and took a look at it, and I said, yeah, I don't have a problem with it. We can get it up there. You know, if the worst case comes to worse, uh, getting it up, wasn't concerned at all about getting it off, but if worst case comes to worst, getting it up, I can always attach the winch to it and and pull it up with a winch. Um, I get over there with the trailer after I clean the trailer off and, and put all the stuff on, um, and the guy didn't want me to take it. He didn't want me to take it because he was afraid I was going to have trouble getting it off which I didn't think, but you know, he's a customer. I've kind of got to go with him. Um, he just didn't want me to take it to the customer and then had me have problems getting it off of the trailer um, in front of the customer. He didn't want the customer to see it and get a bad opinion of his company or something like that. So what I ended up doing is not taking it. So. All of that time that I had cleaned the trailer off and, and uh, prepped it for going over there was for not. Um, but life goes on, you know, I, I'm not gonna charge him for it. Um, the, the guy's only a couple of blocks away from me. Um, I mean, it, it was a little annoying, but I could understand. I, I understood fully where he was coming from about not wanting to, to look bad in front of the customer. So. Um, his customer is probably the most important thing, the primary thing, so we, we had to appease him. So what he ended up doing was, well, he, what he was ended up talking about doing was uh, getting somebody with a rollback tow truck to uh, um, get it up on, and that way it would just come off uh, come off the rollback he could lower the rollback down and it would just come off the rollback and I wouldn't have to worry about taking it down the ramps of the trailer so um, I could understand him it was a little annoying but you know life goes on um, you always run into little aggravations and you just get over them um, but anyways the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about before we get into um, some more shop update stuff. I have a haul coming up, so I'm probably going to be slacking on videos here. What I've got to do is I'm going to Indiana, pick something up, um, taking it down to Pensacola, Florida. Then from Pensacola, Florida, I'm going to Birmingham, Alabama, picking something up and taking that up to... Uh, Portland Washington um, so I'm gonna be gone for probably um, well I'm thinking five days but um, other people don't think I can do it that fast but I'm kind of thinking five days so on Tuesday I'm leaving um, to start it at least that's tentatively what has been planned. I haven't, uh, you know, I kind of pre-confirmed it a while ago, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, now we're getting to um, the time where it needs to be kind of confirmed. Um, and I still haven't heard back from everybody yet, but um, that's the plan so far. That was a tentative plan, and that's the plan so far. So. Some of the videos co this coming week might be a little scarce, and uh, but that's the reason for it. 
So now let's get on to some other things. Um, I got some material. If you are followed the haul truck, you know that uh, I got a front axle for it and you know that the springs on the existing truck were not as wide as the springs that came off the new axle that I got for it. So I had to make shims to take up the space in between the U-bolts and the leaf springs on the front. So I've got that stock. I'm going to be doing some fabrication work on it, cutting work, fabrication work. So let's delve into that right now. Over here at the Kalamazoo bandsaw, just part of a little shop update. This is that three quarter inch material that I am cutting for the springs on the, uh, is a, a space or a shim for the springs on the uh, haul truck. But anyways, I just kind of thought I'd bring you back and show you the Kalamazoo working. Okay, continue. I'm over here at the Kalamazoo again. And when I went to the supply house yesterday to pick up uh, that material for uh, the shims or spacing spacers on the springs for the haul truck, what I was going to do is buy actually two different types of materials, but they had a material in stock that would fit ex exactly, so I just bought some of it. Now originally I had figured 5 inches on the uh, length of it and 3 inches in the in-between spacing, but here's where buying extra material pays off. I mean, if you use it and you use the original dimensions, you know, and you have some extra material left over, you're always going to find a, a use for it someplace else. But what I did was bought extra material of this and then got back here and, and took a double look at those dimensions and said, well, I, I'm going to increase it a little bit. And lo and behold, it comes out that I had exactly, exactly the right amount of material for the job after increasing the spacing. I increased the length of the, the um, overall piece that will shim it out, and then I increased the length of the pieces that go in between the springs to keep that shim in place is a guide to keep it in place in between the u-bolts um, exactly the right amount of material so when you're buying material it's always good to get a little more than you think that you're going to need because you possibly could end up needing it all okay i'm over here at the welding bench and um, what had happened is somebody asked me to fabricate some <clears throat> frames for him. Let's call them frames. What they are, are he's building an addition on his house and he has some type of a barn door or something like that and he wants some uh, angle iron metal frames to surround the doors. Um, I haven't seen it so I can't tell you any more than that. I know that they're seven feet by three feet. Once the uh, um, them mitered on the edges and welded together so I've got to get that done before I go so what we're gonna do is I'll save that shims for on the springs of the haul truck for another shop update video and show you welding them out and how um, they fit into the axle because I'm not going to be able to do that before I go I have some other things to do so um, let me do that. I uh, probably will not show you doing any of these frames in this shop update, but let me shut you off and bring you over to one other thing that I've discussed in previous shop updates. Okay, the Mac Toolbox. I know that I have said and said and said that I would uh, bring you back, <clears throat> show you the toolbox after it's done. I still have not gotten that end cabinet yet, I do know that it is being shipped the third, which I'm uh, thinking is a Monday. I'm pr pretty sure it's a Monday. 
Monday, December 3rd, it's being shipped. So it uh, Monday will be uh, being shipped and probably I won't get it for a week. Uh, well, I'm going to be gone on that haul uh, to Florida, Washington. So um, even if it came in, I probably won't be here for him to deliver it next this coming week so it probably won't be until the week after and then um, sometime after that after I get it up organized and everything I'll uh, bring you back for uh, part of a shop update and also a toolbox tour when it's organized but there's a toolbox sorry for the about the delays on it but couldn't be helped um, you know, they were still building that cabinet. <clears throat> anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hit that like button. Subscribe.